Welcome. This is Ignite Kingdom Talk. Make the marketplace the miracle place. Recorded live at NRB, this episode features Dirk Smith, the Vice President of EEM, Eastern European Ministries. Since beginning their efforts to bring Bibles into the Soviet Union in 1961, Eastern European Ministries has published, printed, and distributed Bibles and Bible-based materials in over 30 countries and over 20 languages through a vast network of partner churches and organizations. Dirk oversees fundraising, marketing, and assists with U.S. EEM operations. Dirk joined EEM following his highly successful tenure as development officer with his alma mater, Harding University. Learn more and partner with EEM today by heading to eem.org. Ignite Kingdom Talk now streams on Abundant TV, Wednesday evenings at 7 p.m. Central Standard Time. Download the app today or head to AbundantTV.com to see all the life-giving content on offer. We would love your help leveraging social media for the kingdom. Let's ignite Christian business leaders all over the world. Like, comment, share, follow, and subscribe. In the name of Jesus, may your faith and hope be ignited afresh and anew. Guys, we're back. We're still here with Ignite Kingdom Talk. We're still here at NRB. It's yeah, like, man, it's, it's, it's never ending. It's never ending. But guys, we're excited about the people that we have a chance to talk with. And here's, here's the thing, guys. It's like-minded people. It's people that we are meeting and, 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 and our special guest today is somebody I haven't even met. We haven't even met. His name, I don't even know your last name. I just know it's Dirk. Smith. But Smith. Nick, it's a really hard name, <laughs> Dirk Smith. But yet at the same time, there's such a, a, a presence of the Lord even here in this booth. But it's, it's the like-mindedness. It, it's, we're after the same thing. And, and uh, so, so guys, you need, to, you need to do this. You need to go to ignite-cb.com and check out all the things that are happening with Ignite. We have the upcoming conference, May 16th and 17th, it, right up there in Omaha, Nebraska. We're excited about that. But, we're, but Dirk, tell, tell, our, uh, tell, tell our audience of, of business leaders, Christian business owners, tell them just a little bit about, about what, what you do. Yeah, so I serve as vice president for EEM, Eastern European Mission. It used to be known as Eastern European Mission, but now we our distribution is is broader than that. But uh, EEM started back in 1961. Started out as Bible smugglers, smuggling Bibles behind the Iron Curtain, and now today we publish, print, and distribute Bibles and Bible-based materials. Last year, into 37 different countries, 28 different languages, all free of charge. So we. I tell people we're in the parable of the sower business and we're kind of the wholesaler working with all the retailers out there. So our only requirement is it doesn't go in a drawer, it doesn't go on a shelf. This is going in the hands of somebody who is being discipled or there's evangelistic efforts taking place. And uh, now a lot of our work has has uh, changed and moved. I mentioned you know, before we got on, we, we've been working in the nation of Ukraine for about the last 10 years. Uh, they came to us about 10 years ago and asked for Bibles for their public schools in, and, Ukraine. in Ukraine. And they teach an elective called Christian Ethics, but they needed Bibles for that for that elective. And about 99% of the students take the class. So it expanded once uh, Poroshenko, which was the chocolate mogul, so before Zelensky came in as president, Poroshenko was president. And when he came in as president, he got a report from his different ministers, and when he got the report from the Minister of Education, he noticed that in this oblast and this oblast and this oblast, or we would call them states, their test scores were up and discipline problems were down. And so he asked, is there a common denominator here? And the Minister of Education said, yeah, that's where we're teaching the Bible. So Poroshenko said, well, I, 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 don't, I don't think Poroshenko, I'm pretty sure he's not a believer, but he's pragmatic. And he said, if that's what's doing it, we need to do this across the nation. So that really opened the door. And uh, so other nations have watched that. And so we're still working in Ukraine. It's obviously very difficult right now because we can't, we, we also believe in creating economies. So when we're distributing in a country, we're typically printing in that country as well, putting their people to work. Hard to do that right now in Ukraine. There are some printers that we're able to work with, but just the supply chain is, is difficult. Um, but uh, the doors are opening up. We're doing it in Croatia, Romania, Hungary, Bulgaria, 
Uh, North Macedonia, we just did 450,000 children's Bibles to be distributed in the schools in North Macedonia. So it's, uh, there's a revolution. Yeah, it's it's very exciting. I, as I tell our people, man, this is this is God's mission and ministry that we call EEM. We've just been invited to have a front row seat to watch what He's doing, and uh, and yeah, I've I've got an MBA. I don't have a theology degree, uh, but for me, it's the opportunity to it, it's run like a business. If I can keep the overhead down, that's more that's more Bibles out the door, and uh, we've seen that increase every year. Wow. What's, what's, what would you say, what's your number one goal with that? You know, it's, it's the parable of the sower. You know, I, I tell people, we're in the parable of the sower business. You know, as a businessman, I would never, I would have never invested in God's seed company. I wouldn't have done it because three of them are bad. You know, you look at the numbers and, you know, God says, I mean, Jesus, when he tells it, three of these are going to go bad. Well, that's not, that's not a good investment. <laughs> But Jesus tells, as the master storyteller, he tells that very intentionally. Because nowhere can I pat myself on the back, and we can't pat ourselves on the back and say, look what I did. It's not about God me. God forbid. Exactly, that's right, exactly. And so that's, our goal is to get more seed out there. So we respond to requests. We're not out knocking on doors and saying, hey, would you like a free Bible? So these are requests coming in. Last year, we distributed just shy of two million books. And, uh, and they, they're going in all different, it's, it, that's the fun of this is going over and meeting the people. Like you've said, you're meeting like-minded people here. You go over there and you meet all in authentic disciples of Jesus and you watch how they utilize the gifts and talents that God has given them to be creative in getting the gospel out there. Um, and, and it's, I, I, I love every time I get to go over and I meet somebody new, a new partner, and I hear what they're doing, and I just go, "Wow, that's that's amazing!" You know how they they come up with these ideas. There's one there in in the nation of Hungary, and I'll I tell this story, and I I, I have to I have to ask for forgiveness because I was over there, and my my schedule is usually very busy, and and different people are setting my schedule, and I was looking at the schedule, and I talked to my guy who is who who kind of is the the contact for Hungary, and I said, "So what's on our schedule?" And he said, "Well, we're." Our next meeting is, is with a, a ministry called Palanta. And I said, Palanta, okay, in Hungarian that means seedling. And what, what is this ministry? And he said, well, it's a, it's a puppet ministry. And I'll be honest, I felt like I was going, is it, what is this, another joy bus I mean, what is this, come on. <laughs> I mean, isn't this, this is old. Uh, and I said, ah, oh. and, and I did, I felt like what a waste of time. We go in, these guys do a high end, pre-recorded, we're talking like Sesame Street kind of puppets, and they have an open door to every public school in the nation of Hungary, and they tell a story like Little Red Riding Hood, and then they bring in this biblical story that attaches to that about character, and they're handing out children's Bibles. Our children, so the, the pilot program that we did with them, they handed out over 25,000 children's Bibles. This last year, our distribution with them was over 175,000 children's Bibles. And they're going into every public school in the nation of Hungary. It's just astounding. But they're utilizing their gifts to be created, and they're bold. I mean, absolute boldness. So, so Dirk, what about here? I got my hands full in, in Europe. That's somebody else. Somebody else has got to start doing stuff here. But I'll tell you, and I get that question all the time. You know, man, we're put, you're putting Bibles in public schools over there. Boy, I sure wish we could do it here. And I go, well, be careful what you pray for. Look at, again, we're in the parable of the sower business, which really ought to be called the parable of the soils because it's really all about the soils. And the good soil was churned up. So what does that look like to us? Think about this country post 9-11. I was living up in the Northeast when 9-11 happened. And I can tell you as a guy who grew up in Philadelphia and around New York, when I went into New York City post 9-11, it was a different city. I mean, if you pulled your phone out, and I would tell people, you want to test and see if it's a different city? Pull your phone out on the corner and act like you're lost, like you're trying to find something, and look at how many people will come up and say, hey, what do you need? You need something? You do that now? Well, you better have your other hand on your wallet. I mean, it's a different city. So when our soil gets churned up, if we go towards God, we grow. Um, my personal story, you don't know this, but 
Um, my wife of 34 years passed away in January of last year after a five-year battle with ALS, Lou Gehrig's disease. No, I, I don't say that for, for that. I, I say that because the blessings that came through that journey, watching her journey and latching on to God, and I will, I will tell you today, oh my, I, I thought my relationship with God was good. Oh, I, it's much stronger now. My, my in soil's the fire, been turned. In the fire. My soil's been turned up. Yeah. So when we say, man, I hope, I would love to have Bibles in our public schools. I'm praying for that too. But I look at people and I say, be careful what you pray for. What's that going to look like for this country? Our soil needs to be churned up. We're, we're way too reliant on us. And we are fat and happy where we are. And there are too many people playing church. They're going in, they're punching their card, and they're not authentic. They're not all in. And, and I'm not, I'm not either. I mean, I'm, I mean, I've got to look at me, you know, that's the, that's the whole thing. Hey, get the log out of your own eye before you start, you know, trying to get that speck out of somebody else's. But that's the challenge in this country is there are a lot of churches that just the biblical, the biblical illiteracy in this country is unbelievable. I would say it's probably even in the pulpits. Oh, that right. there is not a lot I mean I won't say there's not a lot because I don't listen to every pastor but when you hear we should be such a thriving nation because of the God in God we trust is our nation and one nation under God and we have the Bible in any store you want to walk into almost Everywhere. you can buy a Bible for hardly anything but you have to open the Bible you have to spend time in the Bible. You have to go into the secret place. And in Matthew 6, you know where it says that if you go, when you pray, it doesn't say if you pray. And I think there's a lot of pastors even that don't take that time in the secret place. But when you pray, go into the your closet, shut the door, and your father who's in the secret place. And so he's waiting for us as believers to get into the secret place, to meet him there, and that that's where you really, you know, to stand, just stand still and, and see God and feel God and know God in a way you will never know him if you're not in that secret place. And then Psalms 91 that says, if you dwell in the secret place of the Most High, if you dwell there, and that you will meet the Lord in the secret place. So I would encourage you to get into the secret place and let this get into you because it's very hard for this to get into you if you don't have a relationship with God the Father, God the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit will bring revelation of this in your life and you will walk out His purpose, His plan, which you are doing, you know, for the kingdom. All of these Bibles that are being dispersed, you are changing heaven, the landscape of heaven because of the numbers that are... And, and the stories that we get... I my first trip to Ukraine, which this is my, it's hard to believe this is my 12th year doing this with EEM, but my first trip to Ukraine, I interacted with a guy who I just started with the organization. He came up and just hugged me. He said, oh, thank you. I got my first Bible from you. And I was like, I didn't, probably wasn't me, but okay, you know, I'll take your hug. And uh, so I just asked him, I said, because he referenced, he said, oh, and I just read it. I just read it from cover to cover. And I said, I'm just curious, how long did it take you to read it? You know, cover to cover. I had a translator. My translator gave me the answer and I looked at her and I went, what? What did he say? Ask him again, make sure. So I get the answer. So I made a note of it. Well, 12 years of going, I've asked that question. Now this is not a scientific study by any stretch of the imagination, but in the 1200 or so that I've asked, what do you think the average length of time it is for a Ukrainian when they get their first Bible to read Genesis to Revelation? Four weeks. Four weeks, and I pat myself on the back when I do it in a year. They devour it. And then they reread it, I'm sure, and, and reread re it. it. And so we watch them feeding each other, clothing each other. They're doing what Jesus tells us boldly, plainly, loving their enemies. I mean, they're all in because they read it. Well, you look at John 1, you know, when the Word became flesh and dwelt among us, and I think He is the Word. And so when the Word gets into us like yeah. that, yeah. It affects your flesh, that it affects every part of who you are and everyone that you come in contact with. 
Absolutely. Well, Amen. Des, yeah. can you pray over Absolutely. Dirk and what, he, what he's doing? Father, we thank you. We thank you for Dirk, Lord. We thank you for the ministry that you have called him to, Lord. You've equipped him for. And so, Lord, we just thank you. We say, Lord, let it be multiplied even more. Lord, let people sow into this ministry, Lord, that more Bibles go out, the more lives are changed, the more names are written in the Lamb's Book of Life because of what you are doing, Lord. Breathe your breath of heaven upon him, upon his family, upon this ministry. We thank you for it. In Jesus' name. In Jesus name. Dirk, it's been it's been a joy. It's yeah, been a great joy. To, great to visit with you. And, and, and guys, we, we, it's it, it's meeting it's meeting people just like Dirk Smith and, and what he's doing, what he's doing for the in, for the for the kingdom. Remember this: your best days are yet to come. Ignite community. Thank you for making 2024's Ignite Christian Business Conference a wonderful time of faith, friendship, growth, and networking. To make meaningful connections and find support from like-minded, spirit-filled business leaders, join Ignite Partner Access and our Strategic Partner or Kingdom Board of Advisors program. Sessions from 2024's Ignite Christian Business Conference will release in the coming weeks. For now, please enjoy this preview of the Ignite Christian Business Conference. Psalm 92 says, if you plant yourself in the house of the Lord, You'll flourish in the courts of God, and in old age, you'll bring forth fruit. Your business will be successful. You'll be successful. Whatever your gifting is will be successful. But don't disconnect from your spiritual connection. Now, whenever we're talking about governmental authority, you got to understand that kingdom is not, it's not a religion. Amen? It's not, a, it's not part of a religion. Well, what about the church? The church is not supposed to be religious. The church is the legislative arm of the kingdom of God in the earth. You are the governmental representation of the kingdom of heaven in the earth. And your job is to be cultural shifters through the authority that God has given you in the earth. You are the most dangerous creation in the earth today. Do you believe that? Our, yeah, well, God leaned over and said, yeah, I married her. No, 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 I'm not talking about that. You are the most dangerous thing in the earth. Devils, demons, principalities, powers, rulers of darkness, spiritual wickedness in high places. They have no more authority in the earth than that which a human gives them. The word for the hour is this. It is courage. It is courage. Get a hold of the promises of God. Believe them in our hearts. Speak them with our mouth and unleash them, right? But how many of us have spoke them and said them, but we weren't willing to be courageous enough to actually step out and do them? When God has real possession of a vessel, a few words spoken by them have the power to penetrate the veil and pierce the heart and fix an impression on the inside of people that they cannot shake. It's an honor to be here. We had such a privilege uh, to be invited here and to meet so many great people and to see what you're doing with Kingdom. Kingdom is the answer. Kingdom is the answer. Learning how it works is your answer. If you're, if you're, here, if you're here today and you are in a financial straits, Kingdom's your answer. You need to study the Kingdom. Because you're a citizen, you have legal rights. But if you don't know the laws, you'll have the same thing as someone who does not have the legal rights. You'll, you won't be able to tell the difference. How close are you in your business to God? How much of his presence do you daily seek? God, I want your wisdom. Don't run your business without a need for God. Every time I would start to feel a little fear, I'd look at the Bible and the word of God would give me this unction on the inside. It's like, I am not afraid. I am not afraid. I can do all things through Christ. And so I want to ask you today, what is holding you back from doing what you want to do, what God called you to do, what he told you to do? For you to do anything in life, you have to learn how to deal with difficult people. How many of you are not, you're not in the pulpit making your primary living from preaching the gospel? How many of you are marketplace people? All right. So listen to this verse. Speak to Zerubbabel, governor of Judah, saying, I will shake the heavens and the earth. Now, why this is important is because this Zerubbabel isn't that Zerubbabel. Because that Zerubbabel was symbolic of an end time Zerubbabel who would exist in the day at the end of the age when God would shake not only world systems but spiritual systems at the same time. So that hell would be under siege and shaken at the same time that nations are being shaken. 
The real shaking is Satan is getting removed from his position in the heavenlies. And hence there is instability on earth because the devil can't control what's going on. So he's constantly improvising to seize control over what's happening here because he's losing control of what's happening there. It says, and he who loves me will be loved by, by my father and I will love him. And this is the coolest part. I will love him and manifest myself to him. Oh, Jesus. Would your manifest presence, would you be manifest in me that it's your words I speak? When I encounter people, Lord, that it's your face they see. That when I embrace people, it's your embrace they feel. When I speak, Lord, let it be your words they hear. And so, I could just get caught up here for a moment. But John 15, you probably all know the scripture about abiding in the vine and the pruning. And the pruning is always yucky at the time. It's brutal. Sometimes it's really bad. And, um, but the key part is abiding in the vine. And when we don't abide in the vine and we think we know better than Jesus, the fruit we produce is going to be bad fruit. Nobody's going to want it because it's dirty, ugly, rotten fruit, stinky. But when we abide in him and allow his living water, the word of God, his blood to flow through us, the fruit that comes from us is going to be good fruit. Fruit that's going to last, fruit that's going to change people for all eternity. And Father, we just worship you and thank you for what you've done and are doing, Lord. We know you've called us all together. We're family. This is our tribe, business people, Lord. Kings and priests unto you, Lord. And we thank you for what you're doing in these businesses represented here, from the newest business to the one that's been around for a while, God. You are taking us from glory to glory to glory. And we want to magnify you and honor you in everything we do, Father. So thank you. What you want to do in each person, we believe for that to happen. I tell you what, you are secure in God. If you know who you are, you're his son, you're his daughter, you'll know what you have in Christ, your inheritance, and then you'll know what you can do. And the enemy can't talk you off of that. So he did not come into the disorder to the world, the cosmos, to judge it, but that through him, the world, the cosmos, the governmental structure, the governmental order may be recovered, restored, and preserved. Your English word is saved. If I was the devil, I would try to make you Pharisees. I wouldn't want you to be sons and daughters. Why? Because if you come out of religion into the kingdom, you're going to be the worst case scenario for the enemy. You will start causing kingdom, business, government, education, arts and entertainment. Everything that has to do with our culture, society, begin to be shifted and turned back into the cans of Yeshua, the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. People must be born again. But born again is not the end, it's the door. It's the doorway into the kingdom, into your assignment, into your purpose, into taking things that have been in the hands of the enemy and bringing them back to the Father. That's right. That's right. We truly hope you've enjoyed this episode. Remember, trust Jesus. Be who he's called you to be. We would be honored to have you with us for the next Ignite Community Call. These community sessions are entirely free, but registration is required due to limited seating. So register today at ignite-cb.com. To dive in deeper, join us in Ignite Partner Access. From before the beginning, there was relationship. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit together in the loving work of creation. Made in God's image, Christian business leaders in the same way, we were never meant to do business alone. It's easy to isolate in pursuit of success in the marketplace but we believe growth with and among like-minded, hope-filled peers is the best and fastest way to excel in life and business, well beyond our wildest expectations. 
To that end, Ignite Partner Access offers organic and intentionally relational small groups of Christian business leaders who share the common goal of holistic success in service to the kingdom. Our call to the marketplace is a high call to ministry, emulating the impact and encounters Jesus had with people in our everyday conduct as the marketplace becomes the miracle place. Ignite Partner Access offers two unique paid access groups Strategic Partnership highlights the need to be surrounded frequently and consistently by a group of peers who are diverse in vocation but driven by the same set of priorities for success in faith, family, and business. Iron sharpens iron. Meeting weekly, these groups are primarily made up of owners, entrepreneurs, and business leaders who champion accountability to calling and excellence leading to mastery. Grow, stay the course, encourage and be encouraged. Become a strategic partner today. The Kingdom Board of Advisors is built to be just that, a board of mastermind advisors who prioritize the Kingdom of God. Seasoned leaders and business owners, some with multiple successful enterprises, find peers dedicated to their success who also have the benefit of bringing fresh eyes to heart cries and business quandaries. Each member of the Kingdom Board of Advisors also has access to a strategic partner group to pour out and receive on a weekly basis. While the Kingdom Board of Advisor meetings are longer but once monthly gatherings that are built to get into deep vision casting and targeted development of each member's goals in faith, family, and business. Kingdom Board of Advisor members are also invited to participate in spring and fall retreats, multi-day times of learning and community, with guest speakers present to pour in to the Kingdom Board of Advisors. All members of Ignite Partner Access also gain free admission to all Ignite Christian Business Conferences. Christian business leaders, join Ignite Partner Access today at ignite-cb.com. It's time to make the marketplace the miracle place.